Right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Good to see so many people here. Uh, really, really encouraging and... <laughs> yeah, no diggity. Come on, do that thing we were gonna do, get up. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, definitely, definitely no musical interludes this evening uh, from any of us. Um, yeah. It, Big night, I think, for for us. Um, it's been a <laughs> disaster of a season, uh, which is why I think so many people are here. Um, but this is not about this season. It's not about last season. This is about the future. This is about what we're doing, what our efforts are, and how we want you all to get involved. Um, because this this is old athletic. Like you just said, Adrian, we're just chatting to you. This is old athletic. This all the people in this room. Not this stand or that stand or anything. It's it's all about us, and we've all had enough. So we're going to give you a an overview of what we've been doing, and hopefully you'll 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 buy into it, and you'll enjoy it, and you'll 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 like what we've got to say. If not, <laughs> this is your opportunity to tell us. Um, so I just run around and just introduce everybody. I just give a special mention to Dave there, who's doing the uh, doing the um, what are you doing, Dave? No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheers, Dave. Um, um, then we've got Steve from Push the Boundary, who's going to get up and do the first presentation on behalf of Push the Boundary. Uh, we've got Danny, who's also from Push the Boundary, you might know. This is Darren, who is a co-opted director at OASF. Probably all know Brad, <laughs> who's the director at OASF. Jim is our chairman at OASF, and a very capable one indeed. And Dom is the latest co-optee of OASF. As well, so we're missing a few. Uh, who's missing Paul? Just Paul Whitehead, who's our treasurer, not that Paul Whitehead, the other Paul Whitehead. It's confusing and all, but um, and you're missing Will Goff and Adam Keeley. So most of us are here anyway. So uh, without too much yapping, I'll introduce Steve. Uh, you can come and give us uh, your PTB presentation. So it's <clears throat> <laughs> Can we, uh... thank you, thank you, thank you for that polite ripple of applause there. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go off my phone, A, because there's some sort of quite pertinent things that I definitely want to make sure that we get across, and B, because I've got a terrible memory. Um, so, um, are we, uh... right, okay, so what I'm just going to run through is, uh, I'm going to try and keep it as brief as I can. Um, but how did we end up here, which is a bit multifaceted, really. Um, progress that we've made to date. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the boycott that we've, that we've just announced for next season. Um, and also, I'm just going to touch on some priorities and commitments that we've got as a group to uh, the fan base. Um, nice, Dave. I like it. Oh, oh, is that you? Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice, Andy. Um, right. So how did we end up here? Um, I think... Um, um, I think in terms of this season, you know, you can look at this in a number of ways. How did we end up here? How did I end up stood in front of this group of people, um, this frustrated, angry group of people? And also, how did we end up here as a football club? Um, I think what we've seen um, this season is that fans have had to stand up and actually try and make a difference in order to Im impact the way that, you know, the, the, the football club as it goes forward. Um, so to set the tone, as Matt touched on before, this isn't about rehashing everything that Abdallah Lemsagam has done and what's brought us to this point. This is about seeing where we are at the current time and it's about moving forward um, and what we have to do. Um, what do we want our football club to look like? Uh, and what involvement can we as supporters have in that? Um, I think it's become abundantly clear that um, fans will have to play a, f a, a fundamental role in the football club as, we, as it goes forward. Um, you could argue, is it even our responsibility as football fans? Um, or should we just cheer the lads on week in, week out? You know, that is a, an argument that we get. Um, I think there's so much more to being a football fan 
than just turning up and singing songs on the terraces. Um, this club is where it is at the moment because um, too many people have been allowed to take advantage of it, to take advantage of supporters um, and um, our support, our situation um, that we're in now is because people haven't been challenged. There's been no consequences for people. Um, and I think that fans this season have actually finally woken up to that fact and, and tried to make a difference. Um, in the wider footballing world, we live, we live in a world of administration, liquidation, Phoenix clubs, Berry, Leighton Orient, Macclesfield. We've got Saudi Arabian royalty, European Super Leagues. Um, it's a landscape where independent regulators are required because of valued community assets being taken advantage of. In our opinion, fans can and will play a massive part in our future. We want you to leave this room with fire in your bellies. We want you to log off from the stream with determination and a desire to take ownership of this situation, to have an understanding of what you in this room can do to help Oldham Athletic, because it needs your help like never before. Andrew. Um, so, uh, oh, actually, I can just go back one, sorry. Um, so how did we as a group end up stood in front of you? Um, we are here because we've had years of mismanagement, poor decision making, issues with the ownership of the stadium and surrounding land. And we've seen this escalate over the last four years. I'm not standing in here in front of you to step today and saying that um, it is entirely the fault of Abdallah Langsagam. It's not. We know that. Um, this has been a slippery slope, but it has absolutely escalated over the last four years. Um, we could say that he's run us poorly. The reality is he's not run us at all. Um, the club has been left to fester. Um, there's been division between the club and its supporters, and this has largely been driven by the club itself. Um, me, alongside the other lads in PTB, we felt like we had to do something. We couldn't just sit here and, and, and do nothing. We knew that we are putting our heads above the parapet. We're there to be shot at. We absolutely accept that. Are we going to make decisions that everybody agrees with? No. You know, we make popular decisions, we make unpopular decisions. But what we can categorically state to you is that every decision that we make is, is well thought out and we try and consider all of the eventualities. Um, uh, yeah. So, in terms of um, progress that we've made to date, um, we feel like we've given fans a voice. We, like so many other fans in this room, didn't have that. We had nowhere to channel our anger. We had that, you know, we were shouting into a black hole. Now, after helping shape um, an effective foundation, which I think we've seen over the last nine months, um, fans have actually got somewhere to channel that frustration. And having this event tonight is epitomizes that. Um, we've got an allegiance with other clubs. Um, you know, we love a rivalry. We, you know, that is what makes football what it is and we love that but to have other clubs on side um, especially ones that have been through exactly what we're going through now is massive um, we're delighted to have uh, Ashley Brown from the FSA here um, and I think somewhere in the room we've got Christine Seddon from Blackpool Supporters Trust all right so right no problem um, so Christine and uh, Ashley are, are perfect examples of why mobilizing fans is so important not accepting what is continually served up by the custodian who is intent on killing a valuable institution. Um, we're a one big community in football and there's lots of advice that we can call on um, and we will continue to do that. Another positive, um, the relationship with OASF. This has improved dramatically over the last nine months. We're open, we communicate, and more importantly, we constantly challenge each other for the good of the football club. Do we agree on everything? No. Can it get heated? Yes, from time to time. Um, but we know that everyone is willing, who's, sit, who's sitting behind you, is willing to put the time and effort in to get this football club back where it belongs for the right reasons. Um, without disparaging anyone that has had any previous involvement in, in, our, in incarnations of the, of, of the trust, we felt like we just didn't have a trust that responded to fans' concerns. And when they did respond, they didn't side with um, the supporters 
That's what's led us to this point. Um, and that is partly with the reason why PTB were formed. A trust is essential when a club is in crisis. It should be the first one to raise a flag or push the button, not the last. And the current board and its growing number of volunteers know exactly what is required and we have different roles and responsibilities, but one common goal. Having two support groups working in unison has been a successful recipe um, at other clubs and we should be no different in that. If you leave this room and you want to get involved, um, then we would encourage you to do so. Drop us a line uh, and you know, the more hands that we've got on deck, the better. We've gained national and international coverage. Um, we've built relationships with local and national newspapers, people that we can lean on and people that are willing to put the truth about what's happening at this football club above their reputation uh, or having access to the club. Um, we want to say a massive thanks to Suzanne Geldard from the Oldham Times, her constant reporting and challenging um, has been fantastic this year and she's not afraid to ask the right questions of the football club. Fans are now the spokespeople for this club, not the club themselves. That's huge in dictating how and where this ends up and it's another example of how the, the club have pulled the shutters down on us. We've protested, we've campaigned, we've leafleted, we've chartered flights and we've tried to give people a platform to protest in their own way. We can only do so much. We really, really do need people to help us out. You know, we, we're only four guys. We can only come up with so many ideas and we'll continue to do that. But we need, we need your assistance. Um, without any doubt, um, the Atleticos have played a massive fundamental part in getting us the coverage that we've needed at a vital time. Um, and Boundary Park is going to miss their presence next season as they've obviously decided to boycott. Um, we've had peoples with meg people with megaphones. We've had people taking time to make amazing banners. Um, but we need all that and we need more. Um, so in terms of uh, the boycott, so we've just announced this. This is obviously something that's incredibly emotive and we, we understand that. Um, but we also feel that... Um, this is our only option left. You know, we, we changed the stance um, in order to get behind Chez when he came back. We knew that our um, football league uh, future help, help was hanging in the balance and we had to do something. We knew we were going to get to that crossroads where we needed to either back the team or walk away. We decided to give it one more go. It didn't work, but at least we can look ourselves in the eye and say that we gave it the best opportunity that we could. The atmosphere at the Gamers was a rare highlight um, of a terrible season, and that's thanks to you guys, and it's thanks to the Atleticos that we're willing to facilitate that. Um, in terms of the boycott, does, does Abdallah Lemsagam deserve your money? Let's be honest about this. We can look around and say, Abdallah Lemsagam does not care about a single person in this room. He does not care about the way he's treated you, and he will continue to not care about the way um, that you feel about this football club. His actions don't deserve your money, in our opinion. Um, how can you ban supporters? You know, we've got, we've got Brad, we've got Nathan, and we've got Dom as well. You know, how can you ban your own supporters and accuse them of killing the club, and then still expect people to put their hand in the pocket and hand over money to support his regime? We didn't arrive here lightly, and without offering numerous olive branches that have been ignored. Abdallah's made a rod for his own back by his actions, actions uh, of the last four years and choosing not to address key issues. We know it's emotionally difficult for people not to attend games. We understand that. We've not been, we've not been attending games and it hurts. My dad is 82 years old. We've not been to a game together for three years. It is difficult. I may not see another game with my dad. That's the reality. But unfortunately, that's the path that I've chosen. Um, we ask that you would follow the boycott. Um, respectfully if people don't choose to do that we understand and we would ask that respectfully people don't get criticized for that that is their choice but we feel as though if you always do what you always did you always get what you always got um, the athleticals have already stated their intention to boycott we fully support that um, we're going to do a q a um, that will go on our website and we'll release a statement in the next um, few weeks that just has um, lots of more detail about why the reasons that we're, why we're doing it and why we think it's the best course of action uh, and so our commitment and our priorities so this is our commitment to you as fans 
we want to continue to be a voice um, for supporters. We felt like we've done a good job of that. You know, we, we, we get quite a lot of people getting in touch with us and asking us questions, and we try and respond um, respectfully, you know, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, you know, we've also got OASF now who are um, doing a, a very, very similar thing and a, good, and a good job of it. Reach out to us. We're all fans. We love talking about Oldham. We want your suggestions. Um, it's about keeping us relevant. We've gone down to non-league, non-league football, um, something that's unthinkable. You know, it, it could be very easy that the spotlight shines onto the next crisis club in the football league. It's our job to try and keep the, the spotlight on Oldham Athletic. Um, we've got great contacts in the media, and it's important that we utilise and we lean on people because you never know when a potential investor is listening or watching. It's about securing the asset, finding a new investor. Now the season's finished, this is a key priority for us. You know, we've already had numerous good meetings. Um, we've had a really, really positive week so far um, with some really good conversations, and we want that to continue. Um, it's about linking in with a contingency fund and making sure that, you know, we get as much money in that as possible. You know, securing the, securing the ground is fundamental for what we do going forward. But we need money. We've got a landlord that is willing to sell the ground. We know that. We've met him this week and he is willing to sell. And we've seen with um, Wimbledon and other clubs that fundraising can be done and it can work. Conversations are happening and we're looking to explore every single opportunity that we can. Um, at the foundation, I'll probably touch on this in more detail so I won't steal their thunder. Um, one thing that is certain is that a buyer has to be found by supporters. Given Abdallah's track record, I'd rather fans cherry pick the next owner of this football club because I sure as hell don't believe that he will pick the right man to take us forward. We will continue to protest. <clears throat> the boycott is one form of protest. Um, but there will be other events planned. We have to keep this varied. Um, when the fixtures are announced, we will uh, outline the matches that we will target in order to protest um, so that the pressure remains on the regime. Um, this may include uh, games when we're on TV as well. We appreciate it. Now we're in the non-league that we will be um, probably one of the key teams that people will want to show. This would give us an, an ideal opportunity to protest. We'll have a presence at home games with leaflet, leaflet drops for home and away fans just to keep it, um, spreading the word about what's happening. Um, we'll have a presence at away games, as we did earlier on in this season, in the ground, um, to again show other teams uh, and create more publicity for us. We will always continue to ask for more ideas and suggestions. So I guess to close, I just want you all to know that there's not a more passionate, committed group of people fighting for a better future at this football club. The Lemsigams have had their chance, time and time again, to change the rhetoric, to build, to bridge the gap between them and the supporters. They have chosen not to. So now it's time for fans to make this club great again. The biggest mistake that we can make as a fan base is to believe that we individually can't make a difference. We can, and we will. <laughs> Another mistake that we can make is to believe that this isn't our fight. It is our fight, and it's a fight that we're going to win. I thank you for listening, and I'm going to hand you back to Matt. Well said, Steve. Um, like we talk about this stuff like pretty much constantly, <laughs> um, but even when you get it laid out like we're just listening, it still gets emotional. Like it still pulls on all the heartstrings all the time. It's you know it's almost inconceivable that we're in this position. And, and like you said on the podcast last week, Andy, this might not be our lowest moment, and we have to bear that in mind. Um, you know, I want to leave here upbeat and feeling like we can make a difference but we also have to be aware of that so um we're very much aware of that and like steve says we're working really really well together now um so what we're going to do is we're going to show you like what we've done um as a board it's been like when we came 
when we, we got the election was in, was it August? And when we came in then in the September was when it all just kind of like went crazy and the protests were on the pitch and talk sport were on in the media. We had, it was all just all crazy. And we had a lot of stuff we needed to sort out within the foundation. The foundation had been through a difficult time in the previous year or two in terms of like its stability and people leaving and not having a board. And it was a very, very difficult set of circumstances for those people to be working under. But what it left us with was a very tangled, messy, fragmented, unorganized, disjointed sort of organization with people that really sort of some people, the chair, for example, Jason, who left, just didn't have the just didn't have the drive to to drive it forward. I've spoken to him since and I've met him and we've chatted a, a good bit. And you know, he admitted he just, you know, he just wanted to leave. So he did, and fair enough. Um, so we came in and we've been working really, really hard and at the same time trying to deal with everything that's been going on um, <laughs> in the sort of, you know, in the in the national media and everything else. So it's been a steep learning curve. Um, but if you, um, we're going to, there's quite a lot, but I'm going to try and zip through it because if you've got any questions on any specific points, just make a note of them in your phone of something that comes up in the presentation and then come back and ask us a question after it. I'm not going to stand here and go through the whole thing. That's why we've got these microphones. The guys are going, I'm going to like, I don't sort of, you know, we've all got different skill sets and we're all responsible for different things. So the guys, are, are, some of them are better to, to present some of this and to answer your questions. So that's because you're the chair and you're the, you're the cleverest. Um, so we're just going to quickly go through the concerns, the stakeholders' progress, our mission, our promise, our vision, our values, our goals, the company structure, the fundraising, memberships, and what we're going to do next. So the concerns, of course, there are many. <laughs> the main one is the Lemsigums won't leave. Um, and if they don't leave, further relegation. Um, divisions amongst the fan base, you know, even though we've all got different opinions, really we want to be able to talk about it and deal with it. And, 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 and certain elements of the fan base are, are more willing to do that than others. Barry Owen, obviously. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Did you hear that, Barry? You're getting booed. I know you're watching. What a lovely man. Um, you know, he's back um, because the Lemsigums haven't got anyone else to turn to, basically, and that's why he's back. Um, the court case, which obviously is linked directly to Barry. The landlord losing patience. You know, at the end of the day, if he doesn't pay his bills, if he doesn't pay his rent, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be consequences to the football club. There's going to be consequences to us as fans of this football club. So... <laughs> You know, that could, that could end in administration, it could end in liquidation, it could end in Oldham being kicked out of Boundary Park, anything could happen. So to just keep giving him money and saying, oh, everything's going to be fine, it's not going to be fine, some of these things could happen. And then we're at the mercy of opportunists. And when I say opportunists, I mean people that are, we all know what, <laughs> I don't know if Chris Lees is watching, but we all know like people like him, you know, who come along, and also within the fan base as well. Like there are people looking to take advantage of opportunities all the time and what we're going to try and do is make sure that every single person that tries to put themselves forward is doing so with the right intentions and we're going to do what we did to Chris Lees and we're going to make sure that you've really got the credentials and you've got the right reason for doing this because it matters as much to you as it does to us. We're all on the same page and we want the best for this club. So anyone who thinks that they're going to come in and take advantage of the situation, if they're watching, they can think again because it's just not going to happen. So the next slide, please. So just to let you all know, I mean, people like we sort of take for granted that everybody knows everything like we do. Uh, well, we know, <laughs> not that we do, but, you know, we're aware of what's going on. We talk about it 24 hours a day. Um, but the major stakeholders in this top and more than anyone are the fans, OASF, PTB, season ticket holders. Even fans who live in other countries, there's a lot of people invested in Northern Athletic and who care. Um, the Lemsigans obviously own the club still, so regardless of what we think, they're a key stakeholder. The landlord is Simon Blitz and Brass Bank, so we've got to have conversations with him, uh, which we have. Uh, the event centre and the fans led group. Um, the council, the politicians such as Andy Burnham, who we spoke to this week. Um, Oldham and Greater Manchester business leaders and the wider Oldham community. Everybody has some kind of a stake in this football club. 
football club's doing really well, the town, the borough will do really well and vice versa. So it's, it's really intrinsically linked. We've had a bit of stick on Facebook, on Twitter and what, well, <laughs> just in general. But in terms of like, you know, talking to Andy Burnham, well, he's the mayor of Greater Manchester and he knows a lot of people. He's well connected. We're better off having a conversation with him than not having a conversation with him and getting his help if he'll give us his help. So we, we're open to having conversations with everybody. We're, we'd be open to having conversations with the club and with, with Abdallah. If, if we've invited Adam Morley on our podcast. You know, he's, he's always making excuses. So we're, we're trying to have dialogue with people because we need everybody on this screen to cooperate for the best outcome for Oldham Athletic and for you lot. And that's ultimately how, it, how it's going to pan out. So we've made a lot of progress. Um, and what we're going to do uh, is we'll cover all this in the presentation. But, you know, we've had to re-establish our roles and responsibilities. We, we've, we've got people with, with, with appropriate skills um, in, the, in the board. And we're also getting lots of other volunteers coming to us now. A lot of people that listen to the podcast, that they're getting touched touch and say, we want to help. So we're, we're growing our skill set all the time. We, and Darren, you did a, a skills audit with, uh, to fans and, and, and we got a great response from that, didn't we? Yeah, so we got about um, 120, 140 responses from that. We've used that in various ways. So we've got legal advice from people and then just pro, pro rata, uh, pro rata, sorry. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. We've got people that have volunteered here. The lottery is a good example. So um, we had a long-standing volunteer that was doing the lottery uh, before we came in who decided that they haven't got the time to do it anymore. We've got a volunteer through the, through the skills audit for that, just, and that's been working really well. I think the other thing on there as well was policies. So I appreciate most of you probably don't know who I am, probably quieter than that on social media. Um, my background is in HR, so I've done 10 push years in HR. So I've been trying to look at some of the policies and procedures that's in place to make sure when people do leave, which is never going to happen, we get that in the right place. We make sure we've got the right information. Um, we've had some, when people have left recently, there's been issues with bank access and stuff like that. And that's just not okay for the kind of organisation we want to be. We want that to be done in a professional way. So a few things that sort of spring to mind. Yeah, do you, Darren's really good at doing all the boring stuff that I've got absolutely a, no interest in and B, uh, just I'm not good at doing so. That's part of what makes up this board. We've got a good blend of skills. Uh, communication, website, and social media is something that I am interested in. We, we sort of inherited a project with the website, which was, you know, a bit of a challenge. And it's certainly a long way from being finished, but it's functions and it takes pledges. And, you know, we've, we, we're, we've got the summer now to work on the website. And, and, and I think communication as a whole has improved, um, you know, in terms of, like communication with, with you lot as, as in general. So I don't think there's too much to talk about on that. Members of volunteers, we're going to cover that in the slides in a bit about our, our targets for membership. And, and like Darren's touched on, we've got members uh, volunteer, members and people volunteering. <laughs> club matters <laughs> is like our relationship with the club uh, and things like that. It's always, yeah, it's always on the agenda. We do We have tried to meet the club a few times, so I think we reached out to them in October, November. Um, they left me and Jason standing at the door and said, you know, they, they had better things to do. So twice we did that. Then in January, they turned around and said, oh, you can deal with Paul Hughes, who was an ex-foundation chairman uh, to the board. And we just thought, just taking a minute, we want to speak to the real people. We want to speak to the Adam Morales. We want to speak to the Lensigans. Not people who you just put up and just we we're not we're just not taking it anymore. That's the main thing from this. We want we want to speak to the main people involved. Yeah, and they won't speak to us. So uh, not formally anyway. Uh, and you might get the old text out of Adam, but that's about it. Um, partnerships and community again is something that we'll we'll touch on, but it's something that we really need to to grow. Um, we 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 want to try and develop more of a relation with ship with the uh, community trust as well on that front. But they have a sort of difficult relationship in between us and the club, so we'll have to work on that. Um, accounts and fundraising again will come on a bit a bit later on, and uh, obviously we have a plan of sorts uh, and a vision and a strategy, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll tell you about that as well. So this is I tried to summarise it as, as as briefly as I could. Really, we we are here to preserve the traditions of old Athletic, the heritage of it. We're here to protect it from going under. And we're here to help it prosper. That is really important. 
at this moment in time, we're doing the first two. But looking forward, we want it to prosper. We want it to be a successful championship football club, I think, ideally. We've got a long way to go to get to that point yet. We promise, and this is really important because I think the, the, there was a saying, don't trust the trust, for various reasons. But we promise, as a collective, while it's under our stewardship, to prioritise the needs of the football club, OASF and the town of Oldham before anything else. It's not for our gain, it's for, that's the gain. Um, and our vision is to help build a sustainable, competitive, community-focused football club in the heart of Oldham by 2030. And we need to start thinking about what our values are, and as an organisation, but as a fan base, and as a football club. Because if we look at what the values that we have now are, <laughs> breaking promises, treating people really badly, not talking to anybody. It's like an abusive relationship where one side of the, of the, of the relationship wants to talk and the other one just ignores. And it, it is the relationship between the fans and the club is, in technically, it's an abusive relationship. We don't want that. We want to have and display these values and we want our football club to be the same. So these are the how we're going to try and conduct ourselves going forward and what we expect from anybody who's going to come in and invest in the football club in future. I think it's worth saying. Um, so if you think about when Brad and the other fans were, were banned, the people on the, the board at the moment had a conversation and there was obviously people that were boycotting sort of in protest to that at the time. Everyone on the board right now said we, we boycott as well. And, you know, I'm one of those people, for whatever reason, stupidity, I assume, got a season ticket last year. Um, and I, you know, I go with my dad, but that's my decision to, to not go. And again, with the boycott that PTB have announced, we all as a board stand with that. And so if we, I think what I'm trying to get at is if we're asking you to do it, then we'll do it as well. Because we represent you, not the other way around. Yeah, well said. Um, our goals then, we want to build a collective of skilled, qualified individuals that are capable of managing the club if the worst situation happens. And it's left down to us. And Andy has done a great job on our podcast talking to different supporters trust that have literally had to muck in, roll their sleeves up and just get on with it. And they don't know what they're doing. And the whole point of protecting this football club is that OSF and us as fans identify who can do what and are ready for that situation. We might not, we might not have to do anything until that time comes, but knowing that we've got that framework and that structure and those people in place is vitally important. So we're going to try and make sure we've got that by the AGM. Um, again, a network of businesses, community and political leaders dedicated to preserving, protecting and perspiring for this football club. Perspiring? Does that mean sweating? Yeah, well, either way, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's sweat, like, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but that's our goal. Like, we, we our organisation is going to be at the heart of, like, networking in this town. There's so much that we can do that way. We... The football club are failing to do it. They, they, they should, they should, they're having people running away from them when they should be having people flocking to them. You should be able to phone up all them and ask them, phone the football club and, and they'll be able to tell you who's who everywhere around the town because it should be the very focal point. They're not doing it, so we're going to do it. Um, and we're going to deliver a plan, a comprehensive vision and business plan, which we've not got ready at this particular moment in time. We've just kind of got the outline of it, but we're going to put it into detail. We're going to make it very, very comprehensive. We're going to work with as many people as we can, um, like the people that we listed, stakeholders uh, before, and we're going to put together a proper business plan with targets and how it's going to be financed, how it's going to be run. So we're going to, we're going to up our, our game as an organisation to be taken seriously within the town. And ultimately, like Steve touched on before, we want to buy Boundary Park. If the fans own Boundary Park, then football will always be played here. If the fans own Boundary Park and Abdallah's our lawyer, uh, our lawyer, our... Um, where is landlord? I'm just going to have a drink of this vodka. Does anyone else want to talk about the purchase of Boundary Park? <laughs> um, we just, we, we've been opening and airing about what, what we need to do and how, what, the, what the best uh, solution is going forward. And we think that making sure that the, that the stadium and everything is under our stewardship and that we can ensure that the funds that come into it 
are fed back into the football club going forward with the right people running the football club, that that's the best solution. It's a big, big target, but what's the point? If you don't think big. yeah and i think we sort of recognize from talking stand up, uh, talking to people and investors and things like that we can't make a dollar sell necessarily you know we can process we do all those things and make it difficult for him but if he chooses not to sell that's going to be hard but we do have someone that's willing to sell this and the land and the ground so what's the most viable option for us right now and that's not to say that we're wedded to a course of action but we've got a way up and taking look at what's out there and what we can do and that seems to us right now to be the most viable course of action the other yeah. thing is we don't we don't know what's going to happen between now and that point i mean somebody else might come in and it might it, it might not happen but one of the things that we keep saying to ourselves is focus on what we can control because there's so much we can't control so we need to have a vision we need to have an idea a goal and we need to work towards it and we need to put all our energies into that otherwise we, we you find yourself flipping and flopping from one thing to another so that's why we've decided that that's that's ultimately our end game. If 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 another person comes in and buys the whole, another group comes in and buys the whole thing, and it's all great, then fantastic. But you know we can't lose, can we? But ultimately, this is our goal. Yeah, just to add to that, obviously we did meet Simon Blitzen here on Monday, and we had a conversation, and he has openly told us he is willing to sell it. He will sell it at the right price. We need to raise them funds. This is the place which makes the money. The club doesn't make the money. This this will be probably the best stand in the conference next year. And this asset will get the club in a strong position as it was. This stand was built to make the club better. And this is what we need to do. This is our aim. And we need, we need everyone involved in it. Absolutely. So with that in mind, um, the company structure of OASF needs to change, really. We're going to access the kind of funding and opportunities that that give us the opportunity to do that because being a community benefit society would open that up. So we're going to we're going to restructure it. This is something we spoke to Andy Burnham about the other day. It's something that he's been working on with his team at Bury to get Gig Lane back. Uh, a friend of mine worked on that project. So this is something that we are looking to do uh, and it will mean ultimately that we'll have to raise less money because there will be community uh, government money available to us. So that's the plan. <laughs> That's as much as we know at this stage. Unless there's anyone else got, I mean, I know that uh, we've got a, a volunteer called Ed who's um, a lawyer and he's been looking into some of that for us and uh, he sent it over to us recently. Where are you, Ed? Just there. Right. So and we've not had a chance to read it yet, but the the, 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 the information is coming together and we're, and we're moving that forward. I was just going to say exactly what you were going to say, Matt. We've got people looking at it uh, and we're going to explore it and we're going to deliver it hopefully later this year, and it hopefully will generate a lot of, um, or make the fundraising process a lot easier for us, uh, as you say, open us up new grant money, but also making it easier for us to hopefully keep more of the money that people are giving to us. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said before, about keeping it in the news, like keeping it relevant and, and making a lot of noise and <laughs> speak up. <of> the devil. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, the other thing is looking at, uh, at people who are willing to invest and building a consortium of people. Uh, we have spoke to a key, potential key investor who is prepared to potentially, if the circumstances are right, and obviously the circumstances at the moment are not exactly right, prepared. I think the issue might be with this microphone. They don't touch the connector at the bottom. And that's it. It's okay. Right. Um, and. Um, they are out there. <laughs> I'm assuming it's that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just you. You're just like electric. Yeah. <laughs> Press um, mute on number two, three, two, two. Yeah, there we go. That'll do. I think that's it. Um, yeah, so. That wasn't it. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from now. Anyway, um, so yeah, so there are people out there that are interested in investing, and there are a lot of obstacles to that. So we're just going to keep doing what we're doing, but we are having really interesting conversations with people. Um, but fundraising is key. Like we've got to be taken seriously by those people. When you when you're sitting talking to a millionaire, 
who's interested in doing something. You, you know, you want to be looking at, I'm not saying millionaires are all about money, but they are quite a bit about money. Otherwise, they wouldn't be millionaires. So, like, you know, you, you've got to be taken seriously. They're looking at you and thinking, what have you achieved? what's your standing? And as fans, if we can turn around to them and say, well, we've raised this much money, that's what we've achieved. We're running this like a professional organization, then it gives us more clout. Um, and with that in mind, like local buy-in is essential. And that means you leaving this room today, fired up, like Steve said, going talking to your bosses, going talking to your communities, your families, saying, what can we do? Oh, this is your bit, isn't it? Yeah. Go. Cool. You can do use that one. Yeah, so like Matt was saying, we have been speaking to quite a lot of people who are interested in investing, um, but they do want to see an engaged local community who want to contribute to the future of the club. So they want to see a contingency fund with a lot of money in it. They want to see people running events, not just things like this, but all anyone. Just If you've got an idea, do it. If you've got an idea to generate money for the the contingency fund do it um they want to see local businesses who are invested in the future of the club um and that's come in many forms it can come in the, in the form of a local business contributing money to the fund it can come in the form of a local business offering us their expertise um um there's another point i had it all on my phone sorry but it's, it's basically um if we've got a stack of people ready when we're speaking to potential investors, we say, look, we've got all these people lined up, ready to invest, ready to sponsor. It just paints a much better picture of the club that they're looking to buy rather than what we've got now, which is very little activity in all those areas. Yeah. And Jim's done a great job like working with this this um, person who's been in touch and this group that's been in touch and and, and taking that along. And it's a very, very kind of like cautious process, but it's all about building up trust um, and faith. And like, that's where we're at now. We've got a, we need people to look at what we're doing and be impressed by it, basically, as a town, as a fan base. And the conversation we're having, I think we're, I think that people are impressed with what we're doing. We just need to be on a, on a much broader scale across the borough. Oh, sorry, about fan purchase models. That's just like different ways of how, when we were talking about buying the stadium, like how that might come about. So we've, we spoke about different ways that that, that, that might happen, basically. Um, 1895 fund. So any money that's being raised tonight is going into the 1895 fund. Does anyone, is, is anyone, there's no one here that's on the committee, is there? Um, but we've, uh, Dave's not in the room, is he? Ogden, he's not here. He lives down south, doesn't he? Um, but basically, that's the fund that we are fundraising for. It's some people call it the contingency fund. Um, it's going to be safely secured into a bank account, which can only be uh, at, like, can only the spend can only be uh, permitted by the 90, 1895 committee, three signatures. But that will need your vote as as members as to say what that money is going to be spent on. Um, Thank you. So, I'm just going to say that the, the third independent member, which is David, is I think. Um, yeah. He works in financial compliance, so we're, you know, we're in the process of setting that up appropriately. We want to get his advice and his before we start doing anything. Uh, so I think he's a, a strong person to be that independent, given his experience and his background. Yeah, we want to make sure he's watertight, and that's why we didn't like start fund. We could have like potentially started fundraising earlier, but we wanted to make sure that everything was was in place, and we've done the the consultation and the proposal, and made sure that we everyone was clear what the money was being raised for. So I think now we're in a position where we can really press the accelerator when it comes to fundraising um, because all the security, governance and all that kind of stuff is in place. Will be in place. Will be in place. So if we're going to buy all this, we're going to really need to raise up to six million. So it's gone from a million that I've been talking about on the podcast up to six now, but we don't have to raise it all ourselves, as in we don't all have to empty our pockets to raise that money. It's just kind of the kind of target amount that we're going to need to be thinking about. And who knows what's going to happen on that process. But, you know, um, in, in football in terms, and in terms of the amount of money that's going into Greater Manchester at the minute, it's not a lot of money. It seems like a lot of money, but it's not really. Not these days. It's not like it was six million quid in 19, 
88 or something. It's it's different. So I just wanted to like show you like where we were at and how important it is going forward that fans step the game up when it comes to this because so far we've had 151 unique donors from 1182 members which is not very much really so like 12.7 percent of our members have donated and only 4.91 percent of our members donate monthly so right, a lot of you a lot of those people are probably in this room right now put your hand up if you donate monthly okay <laughs> put your hand up if you've donated singly Okay, so we might have a conversation that may be some of the questions about why that is and what we can do to, to help move that forward. Um, but obviously, the numbers aren't big enough to get to the kind of targets that we want. Uh, the most common regular payment is £10, Darren. You, had, you did all this maths, didn't you? Yeah, so we get, from those that donate monthly, it's typically £10. Um, and then from the single donations, it varies quite a bit, um, but £20 is the most common. With 23 I think it was... Um, 100 pound next for like 20 odd donations. I think the thing for me is like, like Matt said, with it's not a, a huge amount of people that are donating. I'm sure there's reasons for that, and we want that feedback to tell, tell us why. Is it you're not clear on its use? Is it you don't feel like you can trust us? You know, I want I want us to be, to build that trust so you know that when you donate, you can be sure it's going to the right place and you can put some faith in that. Um, we can only do that if you're telling us what what we're doing wrong. So. Like I said before, you know, we're here for you, so tell us. Yeah, so we've raised just under 13,000 since October 2021. So really, in terms of targets, if we had 1,000 members paying an average of £10 a month, that would be 10,000 a month, that would be 120,000 a year. If it was five, so that, what's that? Five, that, all right. So single donations can be from fundraising events, they can be from businesses, they can be from anything. So if we were getting five grand a month in, and that's this is what we're going to be targeting, the sort of like, you know, the more the business, businesses and investors and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's a total, 180,000 in a year, if that, off that set of figures, right? Which is, again, if we're talking about six million, it's not, it's, it's a drop in the ocean. It'd be nice to have that money in the bank now, but it's a drop in the ocean compared. So we have 2,000 members, an average paid 10 pounds a month that'd be 20 pounds 20 grand a month or 240 grand a year and if we could if we could get an average of 10 grand a month in single donations then we'd be up to 360 thousand pound in a year which again is a nice amount of money but it's not enough when we need in terms of we're talking about years how many years do we want this to go on for so the next slide and we have to say how many older athletic fans are there I think John Sheridan coming back showed that there are a lot of people that still want to go to who were second bottom in the football league and we were getting 6,000 fans in the ground. Now, all our fans have different circumstances. But if we could get 5,000 members to pay an average of £10,000 a month, that'd be 50 grand a month or 600,000 in a year. So we could have one really, really good year and we could raise an average of 50,000 a month, which is a lot of money, but, you know, there's no point if you're not going to think big. Potentially, in a year, we could raise up to 1.2 million. Now, that is definitely a big chunk of 6 million. So this is the way we have to think, and this is the way that we have to get our mindset. that It's not that it's unachievable, that it's achievable. And especially if we're not spending our money going into Boundary Park and supporting Abdallah, because the more money we have and the less he has, the easier it's going to be to strike a deal for the football club at some point, because he's going to have to leave, because he can't afford to keep doing this. He doesn't put any money in as it is. Don't know what's going to happen next season, but I'm sure you've all got questions about that. Um, so another really, really key thing is to grow the membership. And we've done a brilliant job in that so far. We've grown the membership up to just under 1,200 from under 200, right? So that, that's brilliant. So we're delighted with that. Um, but we want to get it up to 1,500 by the AGM, which is at the, in the summertime. Um, and ideally, up to 5,000. If we're going to get to that uh, 1.2 million a year, we've got to get it up to 5,000. So, a bit of work to do there, but that's the target. Um, and we, we're talking about we're going to get a vote on it from the members at the AGM, but introducing membership fees again, because it is currently free. So, if we've got 1,500 members, and you all, and we're going to be a pound a month, right? Just a pound a month. Um, 
1,500 members paying a pound a month, that's 1,500 a month and 18 grand a year. And you can see it there. If we could get 5,000 members paying a pound, that's 60,000 pound a year. Now, we have running costs, but I can assure you, even with the odd laptop, they're not 60,000 pound a year, right? <laughs> so the more money we've got, the more we can do with it to generate, like Steve was saying about being in the national media and whatnot. We can, we can pay for marketing. We can get things going. We can move things. And whatever's left can go in the fund. So it's important that we've got money to be able to use. Okay? So next steps is to complete our formal proposal plans and targets and get it all written out there and put to you lot as, as members and, and, you know, get your approval and, and, and get cracking. We're having an investor event with Andy Burnham in, we don't know if it's going to be in Oldham or Manchester, but the idea is, is he's going to get all the people he knows that's got a few quid to come along and we're going to present our, our plan, our proposal, and we're going to impress the shit out of everybody so that they want to come and, uh, and, fun, and, and get involved in Oldham Athletic. Because fundraise, 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 that is, that's what it's all about. Until we've got money in the bank, we can't do anything. We're just at the, we're at the whim of whoever comes in. And we've been at the whim of the wrong people for too many, too many times. So we have to have a say and money talks. And, and that's, that's where we're at. What's, what's next, Fundy? A short break? I think that's, that's, that's the, um, do you suppose that's the wrong slide? Oh, I to, you know that I said that I'd get that picture of you lads with your tops off. I, I, that's, that's where that was supposed to be. Is it on the cat? It's on there. Oh yes, it's on. It's on the live stream. Hey. Um, so yeah. So um, we'll take some questions after a bit. So what time is it now? Should we say quarter to nine, and then we'll do questions and answers? Yeah. Everyone happy with that? All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you all sort of start making your way back to your seats, please? All right, everyone. He's over there. Getting the shandy. Okay, thanks, everyone. So, um, I met, we mentioned before about Blackpool Supporters Trust, and um, on the podcast, we've been in touch with loads of different trusts, and we were blown away, and they weren't we, by the response and the support that we were shown, but no more so than Blackpool. They've been obviously through um, a very turbulent time with the Oysons and, you know, it was a very long, drawn-out affair um, and they had to really dig in and dig deep. So um, Christine is, has made it off the M61 and has arrived to in Oldham and I think it'd be really valuable to just let Christine speak for a little while and, and, and share some of that um, with you all because... When she was on our podcast, she was fantastic. So, uh, Christine Sarin from the Blackpool Sports Trust. Hello, everybody, and thanks for inviting us to come along. And I'm sorry we're late, but yes, we were stuck for an hour on the M61 with a police incident. So, I, I, I wondered, actually, if it was your owners had heard that we were coming and <laughs> tried to do something about it. But um, anyway... Um, I'm I'm so desperately, desperately sorry that you are going through this. Um, we, and there's Tim and Tony from Blackpool, um, we went through years, literally, with the Oystons, um, and we ended up staying away for nearly five years. We had to boycott, which is horrific. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you look back and you think, how on earth did we manage to do that? But when you really, really love your club, and I really love my club, like you really love yours you do what you've got to do um I think it's called tough love and you get to a point where I don't know I used to call it battered wife syndrome how many times do you allow them to to knock you down and then make promises that it'll be different next time and then you realize that actually no it won't and it never will be so who's going to do anything about it because I know that owners think that they own our football clubs. And on paper, yeah, they do. But actually, we own our football clubs. <laughs> when, when we started all this, when the Supporters Trust um, started up and we realised just how bad our owners were and... Believe me, it wasn't just because we'd been in the Premier League and then we, we weren't in there anymore. We weren't throwing toys out of the pram. But getting into the Premier League actually showed absolutely what our owners were all about. And once you've seen that, once the scales have fallen from your eyes, there's no going back. So you've got to do something. If you love your club, you have to do something. What is it they say? Doing nothing changes nothing. And I think it was Einstein who said, you know, if you keep doing the same thing and expect a different outcome, that's the definition of, of insanity. So I was just a fan, like your fans. I, I was nothing special. I didn't have a special job or work in the media or anything like that. I was just a third generation Blackpool fan. My mum went to the 53 Cup final on the back of her brother's motorbike. I was brought up with tangerine blood in my veins. 
And I, I can't bear injustice and I could not stand by and see what was going on at my club. So when Tim over here and, and um, others decided to set up the Supporters Trust, I, I, I just became a member. I thought, I've got to do what I can do. Um, and then I started going on, you know, radio shows and things like that and ended up being a spokesperson of the trust. And eventually, I'm not sure how it happened, but ended up being the chair of the trust. But things evolve as, as they go along. And these guys here, I hope that you you appreciate just how much hard work they're doing because they are working very hard on your behalf and they are doing it the right way. You need to maintain the moral high ground, I always used to say. There's no no violence, no aggression leave all the bad stuff to the other side. You need to do things the right way. And you need to be united as a fan base. You've got to accept that not everybody is going to agree on what is the best thing to do, but you need to respect each other and just do the very best that you can. Divide and conquer, they talk about, don't they? And, and, and you don't want that. You need to be as united as you can be. But believe me, as supporters, when you act together, you are supremely powerful. They cannot defeat you if you stand together. You must never, never give up because honestly, there is hope. We, we had no idea what, how long it was going to take. And I think if at the start people had said it was going to take you five years, we'd all have gone, oh, no. But I, and I don't know how long your situation is going to take. You've got a very, very bad situation here. You've got a, a disease at the heart of your club and it is destroying your club and will continue to do so unless somebody cuts it out. And it's going to be down to you because at the moment, although change is coming in football regulation with the fan-led review, um, but that's, that's not going to happen fast enough for you. So you're going to have to have to take this on board yourselves. And you can. So please have a look at, if, if you're not familiar with the Blackpool story, I'm, I'm sure you know bits about it, but try and have a look and, and read what we did. There's far too much would be here like for a week if I tried to tell you the whole story. But it's, it's inspirational because it was a, an entire football community that came together and succeeded. We, we won. Our fight was football's fight. So if we could win, so can you. And I'm absolutely convinced, particularly with the way these guys are, are, are leading you, that you will win. But you've got to stand together. You really do have to do that. So, you know, I, 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 my heart bleeds for you. Honestly, I, I, I hoped that our situation would be the very last time that any club had to suffer. And yet, look at Berry, look at all the other clubs that have happened. And now it's happening to you. We've been listening to you um, while we were stuck on the motorway. And honestly, we were just saying it's like deja vu. It really is. I, I, I recognize everything you're saying, everything you're going through. And, and it's horrible. I can't tell you it's easy because it really isn't. But it's your club. And you are the absolute lifeblood of any club. They can't exist without you. They'll, they'll try and pretend that they can. They'll try and turn things around on you. And particularly, I know... John Sheridan is, um, you know, a, a legend for you, and I totally get that. But at the moment, because he's coming back, he's a he's a bit of a shield for them to hide behind, and they will definitely use that and say, "Oh, you know, you're not a proper fan if you don't if you stay away." Please don't listen to that because that isn't true. The hardest thing you can do as a fan is actually to make a stand and stand back and say, "I am not going to empower you to destroy my club any longer." but it will work eventually. <laughs> okay, so, so thank you. I, I won't waffle on anymore because you've got lots to talk about. Um, Tim, Tony's here, Ashley's here from the FSA. But I just want you to know that we absolutely support you. Blackpool fans support you massively because we absolutely feel your pain and it can be done. So anything we can do to help, any questions you've got, any advice we can give, we're here. So good luck. Good. Thanks, Christine. I wish you were an Oldham fan. <laughs> um, right, so, question. Right, so we're going to do questions and answers. So, 
Andy's going to go around with Mike. So just stick your hand up if you want to ask a question. Can you uh, give us your full name before you ask a question? It's basically about you lot, really. Do you all work? Yeah. Fair play to you. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much, because that is some effort. Anyone else? Yeah. Oldham Athletic Senior Director coming through. <laughs> <laughs> give us your full name. It's, uh, Jack Adcock. So, just want to ask, it's not a criticism, it's just, we do all this and he won't listen. How do we make him listen? What is the way or what's your idea to make him listen? Because like at the protest we saw, and like you've already mentioned, that no club rep will speak to you. They won't come on the podcast. I think you said Adam is a club lawyer, won't speak to us properly. So how do we change that? Because as long as we're doing all this, we need them to actually listen. Otherwise, it's in vain. Yeah, uh, I'll go first from a push the boundary point of view. Um, we've just got to keep um, applying pressure. Um, protests, uh, like we said in the pro presentation, will be uh, varied throughout next season. There should be televised games that we uh, will target um, to, to, again, keep ourselves relevant in the media. Um, protesting, boycotting, that will hit his, hit his pocket. Um, he was going on in the club statement about having um, the, a, a similar budget to this season. If that is the case, then the, I'm not sure where the money is going to come from if it doesn't come from supporters because the, we've got um, the, the parachute payments are substantially less than what we get in the EFL solidarity payments. Um, is the, the televised money is going to come nowhere near either. Uh, so again, the, again, player sales is not really much in the playing side of things that he, he, he could get too much from. So uh, again, it is just keeping uh, applying pressure from our side um, and, and looking at what, what we can do, uh, certainly on a match day. And, and again, still looking behind the scenes, trying to find the, the right investor or investors to, to come on board and set, basically sell our project to. Yeah, I'll, I'll just um, expand on that a little bit as well. I mean, you know, from a when you speak to the football club, we don't say anything anyway, you know, so it's almost like, well, you know, we can try and have that dialogue with you, but the reality is you just get the same messages from them. So is it, is it, do we miss that dialogue? Not really. I think what we've got to look to do, um, and this is obviously part of the plan that, that OASF have talked about tonight, is that securing this asset gives us strength, it gives us power, um, and then we can strangle him from the outside. You know, it's, it's not about having dialogue with them. It's about just cutting his arms and legs off and just making him see that he's got absolutely no other option but to leave. Don't buy it. <laughs> if Boundary Park is empty next season, he's, he can't afford to keep the club going. Like, were they, were they, and, but we can all make a decision. We, we are not. People are free to make their own choices, but we have to get the message out there. You, you guys, if, if, you're agree, if you're in agreement with this principle, then go out and tell people. In, encourage people to, to, to take action. It's, it's a collective. You're probably sick of hearing my voice. I mean, like, on TV night, other people have to give the message out there. And we, we, we have to... It has to be empty in there next season because he can't afford to stay. He, can, he hasn't got the money. It's not like the Oysters. They had a few quid, didn't they, the Oysters? They were taking all the money... Out of Blackpool, that's not happening at Latix. He's he can't afford to keep the club going. So that for me, that's that's the key. Just don't and, buy it. And if people do want to carry on going, well, you, to those to those people, to those people that insist that they want to carry on coming, then then the conversation you need to have with them, if it, if that's what they decided and you're not going to change the mind, then they need to encourage them to donate to that fund because that's the other angle, isn't it? If we... I know, I've tried, I've tried to speak to people like that and, and try and get their... That's fine, it is what it is. Blackpool, you didn't get everybody to stop going, did you? Like, you know, it wasn't the way. You're always going to have some fans that go. 
that's we can't you know we can't make it completely empty but we can Andy no, I've one. got one, I've got one here that's why okay. I moved over here just give it just go so, on you're a fit lad what come on <laughs> right then Blackpool come on <laughs> I'm Tim from Blackpool Sports Trust I was the first chair of our trust um everything you guys were saying down there and so I don't know your names is exactly the questions that we had posed at us in 2014, 2015. People won't stop going. Some people are still going to go. All you can do, as Christine said, is stand together. The more of you, the, you'll never, you'll never completely clear the ground. We thought we could do it, but we couldn't. But we did it enough to make a difference. And the more of you that do it, and the more of you encourage other people to do it, the more effective it will be. And, and when you talk about the club not talking, speaking to you, don't give a stuff about that. You can be, the bigger that your organisation is, the bigger your foundation is, the bigger that the bigger your protest movement is, you won't be capable of being ignored by the owners or by anybody else. So just do what, don't think about the negatives, think about the positives. Well said, Tim. Yeah, to, like I said, just to carry it on, uh, when Blackpool was in the situation, when I think it was 2014 15, we went and we took a lot of, we always take a load to Blackpool. And I was outside the ground going to the, you know, the Latic stuff on, and the Blackpool fan came to me with, with leaflets. Yeah, no. Yeah, so they were saying, we're not going to go in the ground today. And I'm like, you joke. You're not going to go to see your own club. You're not, you're not proper fans. If you do, you're not, you know, I just couldn't understand why they wasn't going. So to carry on the thing, Next, I've been a season ticket holder for 30 years, and, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to renew my season ticket next season because of what's happened. <laughs> and, and this is what we did. I had a dread getting on the microphone tonight, but what I've seen tonight, there's no way I'm going to go next season, and it's going to absolutely kill me. It is. So whether the rest of you want to do, but... Honestly, the first time ever, but even even last season, my son he, he, he said, I'm, "Dad, I'm not going to." And I said, "You did, you because he's back." And I said, "No way, I can't." But th this season is at home with Lemsigan. There's no way I'm not going that season. I'm going to give all my money to the Oldham Athletic Sports Foundation. Thank, thank you, thank you. Top star, thank you. Right, I've got another question over here. I promise this lad over here. Right, give us your name and then give us your question. Mike Holden. Um, basically, next season we're down in the National League, which is a new governing body, uh, a new league, a new board that looks after us. Do we know what the rules are in regards to an ownership that, they, all right, they say, oh, we'll match last year's uh, budget, which nobody knows what it was in the first place. We've got an owner that's not paying the bills. Are there different rules that apply within the National League compared to the EFL that we had a loan with that maybe says we can't even compete next year? Like, what do they say in regard to that kind of thing? I think it is being looked at. Um, I think Scunthorpe are looking at it more in more detail than what we are. Because um, obviously they were under the same embargo. They have spoken to their club and to find out if what happens to the payments. Because obviously, I think we we last time we were told we still owe the money to the EFL. They're going to need that repaying. The solidarity payments aren't going to come. I don't think they're going to take it off in one big lump sum. Or they don't know because it's the first. There's the two clubs who got relegated, and the two clubs who have the loan. So our honest answer: we don't know. We are we have asked the club that to find out exactly what is going on, and Scunthorpe are doing the same. And we are talking between ourselves to find out the actual solution. Um, yeah, it, it is being looked at because obviously it is worrying that we have this money still outstanding. Um, just from the push the boundaries. Put a perspective again on that. Um, we have made contact with the National League. We've got a call uh, booked in next week with uh, Mark Ives from the National League, so we'll find out quite a bit more information than we would have thought. Uh, we're led to believe that we still owe uh, or still have outstanding on the EFL loan approximately 180,000. Um, so that that's just from from that point of view. We just need to find out, like Brad just said there. Um, about repayment terms on that and, and how how the EFL go about getting the money. Um, certainly when we're not benefiting from the EFL anymore with uh, solidarity payments and stuff like that. But again, uh, from our point of view, we'll try and keep you as updated as possible once we've spoken to the National League uh, next week.
Right, more questions. Here we go. Name, please. Vincent Vega. <laughs> Evening, Barry. Um, I want to know about Simon Blitz. You said you've had a conversation with him. He's willing to sell. I think we need to hear more. Uh, well, so yeah, so we met Simon Blitz on uh, Monday when he was over um, alongside OASF and we don't know the figure that he's willing to sell for, but uh, I thought it was going to make, make a joke about me actually being stood up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we met, we met with Simon on Monday. Uh, we don't know the, the, the number um, that he is willing to sell for, but what we do know is that he's willing to negotiate and that he is happy to sell. Um, so I think that's kind of what we're working on at the moment. That's obviously what the plan is based around as things stand. Um, so it was we, we felt as though it was a it was a positive discussion to take place, um, but but we need to follow up on that if we're going to get anything out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we can. Um, and and I guess the difference is with this, he's told us face to face, you know, and he's actually agreed to meet us and and tell us that he's willing to sell. Uh, you probably have to ask him. Uh, I mean, if yeah, it, and and this is this is why the you know what we're doing with the fund is so important. Really, you so know, we need to raise that money as quickly as we possibly can so we can have a seat at the table and make sure that he doesn't sell to somebody else. He did. He did say he would not sell to Abdallah. He did come out of the meeting and said that. He also turned around and said that Abdallah owes in rent. That is a worry at the moment. Because if you're a landlord, you're owed rent. What happens? Not the whole ground, not including Little Wembley. So basically, we are looking at this stand, the three surrounding. Every the little Wembley and the car park at the car park, yeah, and the car park, not the, not the, little Wembley, not behind the Rochdale Road end, the the, the the four stands, the pitch, and the car park. Abdallah owns nothing but the badge. That's it. Right, should we, another question? One over here, gentlemen. Name, please, and question. Uh, Scott Wollstonehome. The two groups are both doing. A fantastic amount of work and all credit to you. Is there any merit to you coming together to work as one group? The Blackpool group have said all the time that they're one group and it's one name. You, an you answer questions with the same kind of slight, dif not different answers, that's not fair, but so you've got some information about Blitz, you've got some information about Blitz, you've got a meeting in the National League, maybe you have, you haven't. Is there any merit to you coming together and us being one huge voice as opposed to two decent-sized voices with all those backing it? I think, um, it's, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think what I, would, what I would say on that score is that, you know, we are working a lot more closely together. Um, the trick is not to tread on each, each other's toes. You know, you know, you look at the old trust as was when, you know, we'd we'd meet Carl Evans, we'd release some minutes, and then two days later, the trust had released their minutes of their meetings with Carl Evans, and, and it, it's pointless. It, it's just counterproductive. I think what we're doing is, you know, OASF are the three percent shareholder. They're the one that that would technically have a seat at the at the, at the table with the, with the football club. We're happy to not have that. Um, it allows us to be a little bit more ferocious when we need to be, and we're not we're not you know we're not that shareholder. Um, so I think there's merit in us being apart. Uh, there probably is merit in us being cl much closer together as well. Um, I think for the time being, um, that the freedom that we've got to do what we want helps better than us being tied into that the OASF relationship. If if, if you listen to the the um, podcast episode we did where we interviewed Christine, Christine explained. Correct me if I'm wrong, Blackpool. You had Blackpool Supporters Trust like OSF. And then you had a, an independent supporters group called the Tangerine Knights who were like, uh, push the boundary. I think Christian used the phrase, they were your provisional wing. <laughs> Go and listen to the, to the episode. It's a cracker. But that, that, for me, is the difference between the two organizations is push the boundary, sort planes out flying over the ground. 
foundation do the more professional stuff with politicians and sitting down and having meetings so and they complement each other. And, then we, and we do hold out hope that as a shareholder, at some point the club might go, shit, we probably do need to speak to these people and engage them as a shareholder, at which point we can do that. Whereas I think, and we'd still retain a group that can do those protests and take that more aggressive stand, shall we say. So I think that's where the benefit sits in the split. Yeah, and just like we... <laughs> When I was uh, over in Ireland and I was doing my podcast and I was like, the trust needs to be more proactive in challenging the club. And I was on the phone to stay and I was going like, come get, put yourselves forward to be on the trust board. Like get, let's get this moving. The trust is not doing enough to, in terms of you, you're filling a gap. But if you hadn't have been there to do that and you were insistent, you didn't want to cross over. The word, like you said before, we can, we can disagree. And we can look at it from different perspectives, and that's just as important. But we are effectively working together as a group, and we we're all Oldham fans. It doesn't matter whether it's pushed to boundary, OASF, whatever. We're all Oldham fans. But the more of us that can cooperate, and and there was such issues with that cooperation before, um, but we do have like fundamentally different roles, and that's important that we maintain that. So there is merit, but we do need to t maintain that anonymity. Uh, is that the right word? What's the word? What's that in a minute? It doesn't matter. Um, autonomy, that's the word I wanted. Thank you. Uh, autonomy, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Right. No, another question. Name and question, please. Uh, yeah, Dave. Um, are we going to get an independent valuation of this place? You know, it's all right, Blitz saying I've spent, I don't know, eight and a half million pound on Brass Bank balance sheet, but. Is that what we're going to spend a little bit of our money on? Because I think that's probably worth it. Because we need independent people saying what, what this place is going to be worth. Yeah, 100%. We, we do agree. Um, it, we're part of the contingency fund. So we did set out that proposal that any administration stuff, anything for valuation, any solicitor's costs, that will be included. And we totally agree. People say, oh, it's not worth this much. It's worth more. We get both sides all the time. But we need to have a sort of... Our own surveyor come in, check it out, and put the offer in when the time is ready. It, yeah, when we've got more money, when we're ready. When we're ready to buy, we will. That's when we will look at it. Yeah, so when, once we get more money in the fund, that is something which we could definitely look at. Right, Lane. <laughs> um, Lane Huskinson. General trouble cars and one of your biggest critics, I think you all know. Um, a couple of lads behind me were asking why you want six million, and maybe you can come to that. But I want to talk about what I believe is the future, and that you've been talking about fans donating. Uh, in 15 days' time, I'm going to Oviedo to watch Real Oviedo play the last game of the season. They're in the playoffs potentially, and next season they could be playing Real. Real Madrid. In 2012, they needed £2 million, pounds, €2 million Euros in 30 days. They didn't just ask their fans, they asked all football fans to help them. And I know there's shareholders for Real Oviedo in this room right now, and I know them not through Oldham, but through Real Oviedo. And, you know, we should all be talking to people. Yeah, we should be talking to the people in work. We should be talking to our friends who aren't just Oldham fans and telling them about what's happening and asking them to help us. We shouldn't just be talking about fundraising from internally. We should be going wider. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. echo that. Totally agree. Um, I think we one of the things that we've... Um, so we've, we've got a really good relationship with Leighton Orient um, and they've been in touch with us and they've given us loads of suggestions regarding... Um, you know, approaching the, the teams around us, you know, and, and trying to get them to contribute to the fund or whatever it may be. You know, he's even been in touch about um, with Orient fans actually trying to get doing some collections on the tube and things like that. You know, so when people are going through and having buckets there and, and you know, so the, it, we're looking at literally every every way that we can think to, to, to raise as much money as we can in the shortest possible amount of time. We're... Yeah, 
we, we appreciate all these ideas and we think they're fantastic. But if you have a look at us, there's not that many of us and we've got loads to do. And this is why we need you to get involved and help us fundraise. These are all great ideas and we really, really want you to get involved and help us. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, go on. Oh, but, no, 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 it's all right. You just have to have the magic touch. Just on that, yeah, if you can't, if we can't do it amongst ourselves, there's no chance that there were good people, fans of other clubs can't do it. So we've got to set the standard. It's up to us. It's, it's really, we've got to get it going. Like, and, and, and we said it before about stakeholders. Everybody who leaves this room tonight, it's on, it's on you. It's on every single one of you. It's not on us. We put absolutely countless hours in. It's seven days a week. Don't leave it up to us because we might all have heart attacks or something. Put it on yourself. You've, it's it's your responsibility as much as our responsibility. And and if you if if you if you can't be asked, you can't. We've all got all got kids, all got full time jobs. You've, your life is no more difficult than my life. Get on with it. Get out there and get and, and do it. Because right, another one over here. I'm gone. Or was it you? Was it was it you? Was it him? It was him. I think it was you on it. Hello, hello. Uh, name's Ryan. Um, hello. Um, Barry Chater was mentioned online. Um, have you spoken to him? Do we know what he wants? Is he actually in, interested in investing in the club, buying it, whatever? So yeah, so we have met with Barry Chato. So we met him yesterday. Uh, yesterday, uh, I think it was uh, three of us here and two pushed the boundary. Uh, we met him. Uh, he turned around. He said that he's tried speaking to Abdallah twice. Uh, he tried in February and in April, uh, and he's got no response uh, from him. And that just sums up what we've been saying: that the club's up for sale, and a person who's looking to buy has come to him and he's not responded. Um, what we've said, uh, obviously we put on there that we have secured one, in, one investor conditionally. We are going to potentially look to form a consortium with these two people. Um, Barry has come out and said that he's willing, he's somebody who's local, knows the club, knows football. Um, and yeah, we definitely are speaking to him. We need to know, learn a bit more what his plans are, what his finances are and take it further uh, from that. But yeah, he's, he, is, he is willing. We did leave it as well. We did give him Adam Morley, uh, his contact details to see if it was, if he can speak to him and see what is needed, if he wants to do it himself. But yeah, to answer your question, we have spoke to him and we're going to take it further. Name please and question. Yeah, I'm Chris, Chris Stott. So I think we've spoke about stakeholders. Um, I think one of the elephants in the room is where OEC and family groups sit in that. Ultimately, obviously, at the moment, appreciate the wanting to run a business. How does that benefit the club? I know, obviously, there's been service level agreements, which the club have not wanted to engage in, but we spoke about this stand being an asset. Currently, top floor, nothing been done with it since it was built. Bottom floor, nothing been done to it since it's been built. Get the club's got a part to play in that. What's your vision for the future as far as this stand is concerned and what you see family group where, where do they fit into it all because i think that's a big big gray area uh, 
Um, I can't really speak for FLG because we've only had one meeting with them. Oh, there's, there's Paul. You can ask Paul any questions at the end if you like. Um, but essentially, the, the plans that they had in place that everyone saw in 2019 are still available online. That's still what their plan is, to improve this stand and use it to, to, to benefit the club. Um, beyond that, we don't know anything more than, than what was already in those plans back then. No, if, Paul has said that he's willing to answer any questions at the end. I'm not sure. You'd have to ask Paul. I can't answer that either because I don't know. I don't know the content of the court case because no particulars have been filed yet. Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, he's Obviously, he's not happy about it. <laughs> um, he's, he doesn't think that there's any any grounds. But he, he been, he's been here before. He's got chucked out before. We all know who's instigating this court case. And we all know his, his reasons why. Because he wants to stay involved. And once Abdallah's gone, he's gone. And he knows it. Um, and it, it comes back to what we can control. There are stakeholders and there's people. It's, it's easier to have some conversations with some people than it is with others, but we keep trying and we keep focusing. And money talks. So whatever happens with this building, whatever happens with the FLG, it's all going to come down to who's got the money in place to do what with. So, like, at the minute, that's what is the driving force. Um, the FLG don't have the money to, to take over and buy the, you know, they would have done it by now. They haven't got the money. We don't have the money. And nobody else out there has got the money. So we're in limbo. That's where we are with all that. We're just in limbo, which is why we're trying to do what we're trying to do. We're trying to get everyone to cooperate as much as possible and get as much money in and make something happen. So it comes back down to that thing of money. Well, until we've got some, we can't do anything. We're in a state of flux. We're just going to stay where we are. So it's frustrating for all of us. And we've had... Honestly, whatever questions you've got, whatever thing you've thought of, we've thought of, and we've asked the relevant people, and we're trying to get it moving, um, and we're doing our best, and we think we're being reasonable with everybody, and you know, um, we are making progress. Some progress is faster than others, but it, again, it just comes down to money. Cheers, Chris. Appreciate that. Any, any more questions? Any more questions? Yep. Name, please. It's, it's Graham, um, not Barry's son. Um, no, there's been a clear, um, a clear understanding on social media, etc., of people um, trying to get in contact with Abdallah to buy the club, um, yet. I've not been able to contact them or had no response from the club. Is there anything, or is there a direct line of command as in, I want to buy the club, where do I go next? Or is it just Abdallah not answering his emails, etc., etc.? I think the main one, the only person who seems to get any communication is Adam. Um, we've had a few text messages, we've had a few emails between us, and he's the one who's overseeing it. Uh, we know what terms need to be given. So you have to sign an NDA and proof of funds to go anywhere. Uh, or they won't entertain you. Um, so like I said before, the question on Barry Chato, we give Adam's contact details. If he can show the proof of funds and sign the NDA, then things start to move. We don't know. Um, obviously, the asking price of the club. It's, 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 it's more to do with the funding of the club. Yeah. So it, it's about it's about the going uh, funds for for two years. That that's it's not it's not a well could be could be three million quid to run. Well, someone just said how much Dallas asking for. Um, recently on Talk Sport, he turned around and said there's been a discount from eight million down to six million. <laughs> but yeah, 
that that's what that's what Jim White said was his uh, exclusive on Talk Sport. Not worth a penny. Right. No, another question from this gentleman here. Give your name, please. The badge only. He owes nothing else. Right. Maurice Scott. Um, question, can, question can we have a bit the, of silence, please, for the questions? A question about the uh, fund. Can we stop calling it a contingency fund? Contingency means something that may or may not happen in the future. It's, it's here and now. And we, and we need the fund. We, we need the fund to be more immediate. We've, we've got a situation that there's a lady dying of cancer. And in the last few days, they've raised millions because everybody wants to please her in the next couple of days. Our problem isn't a contingency that something may or may not happen and we've got to chip in some money. It's we need serious money now. Yeah, we fully agree. Maybe a, a crisis fund or something like that might be more appropriate. Emergency fund. Uh, it's the, it is officially the 1895 fund, you're right, uh, Any more questions? Yeah. Gentleman here. Name, please. Uh, Graham Anderson. I've been a Latics fan since 1958. Uh, followed them through thick and thin like everybody in this room. I, if you cut me, I'm blue. I've renewed my season ticket for next season. I renewed it because I really, really thought we were going to stop in the league. We haven't. But what I want to know is I've got some very, very good friends who are going to boycott Boundary Park next season. I've bought my season ticket. I'm going to come and watch. I'm going to go as many away games as I possibly can because I love Oldham Athletic. Simple as that. Does that make me a bad person? I don't know. No? I, I, I hate the Abdallahs. I, de I detest them. I detest what they've done to my town, my country, my fellow Athletic fans. I detest what they have brought to Boundary Park. They are a cancer within our club, a cancer that needs to be cut out as soon as possible. And we can only do that by backing the 1895 fund. We can only do that by getting our hands in our pockets and stretching them pockets We've got to get together. We've got to be together. Sorry. sorry. Okay. sorry. Yeah. Uh, Graham, from a push the boundary point of view, and I'm sure the others echo my, um, my sentiments here as well. First of all, no, it doesn't make you a bad person, not in the slightest. And you, the reasons that you're going to Oldham Athletic are completely understandable, like everyone else in this room, if it should be true. To do that, um, what the only what I will say from personal experience, and I know there's someone in the room that used to work my, with my mum. My mum uh, is or was uh, a Berry fan, and when she uh, sh she went uh, week in week out, and not enough Berry fans did enough to raise the red flags when the red flags were there. She'll say exactly the same thing now. Uh, my mum. Bucket collected in 2002 when they were in, in administration initially uh, and sadly didn't have the fight to do that again when it came back around. Uh, and the one thing that my mum said to myself and my dad was um, when, I, when I decided to take this on with the other lads was that uh, I, all I want to do is watch Berry Football Club at Gig Lane. And that then suddenly got taken away from her. She can't go to Gig Lane anymore. Um, she goes watching the Phoenix Club now at Berry AFC. She loves it. But what my mum did say was that, <clears throat> it, that all that's all that people want to do. So I want to come to Boundary Park and watch Old Athletic play. I'm stopping doing that personally. And everyone has the, the same choice. Um, 
I'm stopping doing that personally because if I, in my, in my mind, if I came and uh, to Boundary Park week in, week out, there'll be a time because I've donated, in my, again, in my, my opinion, that I will not get to come to Boundary Park to watch Old Athletic Football Club because if we keep funding this man and, and, and his brother, the Old Athletic Football Club will not, will not, will cease to exist at some stage, at some stage, if, if he is still here in, in however long. And that's what we need to start. We need to cut it at source and, and again, back what, what's going on with the 1895 fund and, and move forward with, with, with that. That, that. Again, that's all I've got to say, but no, it doesn't make you a bad person at all. I suppose what I want to say is I, I, you have your reasons and that's not for us, anyone here to judge it. If we're still here in a year's time, you might have a different view and we'd welcome you to that if you decide to boycott in the future. What's not going to work to those people that you know that don't want to boycott now is being aggressive with them, with calling them dicks, with doing whatever, because that's not going to convince someone. If someone came to you and started speaking to you, ah, are you going to suddenly change your opinion? Go, oh yeah, you know what? You're right. You want to have adult, grown-up conversations with them time and time again. Why, you know, if you're doing that every time you see them, but you treat them like you want to be treated yourself, and eventually they might come around, and that's great. If you do it today, tomorrow, a year's time, that's what we need. Another question? Right, another question? Uh, name, please. Hi, uh, Jonathan Bell. Um, just listening to what you're talking about before, um, and picking up on what a couple of other people are saying around um, involvement of fans from around the country and stuff like that. The one thing that struck me about when we got relegated, I was gutted. No one else in the country cares. And, and you think, well, they should. We were in the Premier League. We should have visibility. Yeah, we, we should be a team that people care about. Think, what, what, what did you do the day after Notts County went down? Nothing. Nothing. I did nothing. I knew it was a club with massive history, found in the Football League. Didn't do anything about it. So what I'm saying is, for, for us, I, I, what I'm really pleased about hearing tonight is there's clarity around messaging. You're really clear, clear about what you're doing. You're really clear about why you're doing it. I think it's interesting that we've got an Oldham fan that remembers something seven years ago of a Blackpool fan saying, don't go in there today. And I reckon, you know, as much as we're talking about pledges and rail, I don't know enough about the Oviedo situation. What I do know is I pitched up as an away fan at a game. And I saw people like that with buckets going outside. Don't go in there. We're trying to buy the ground from under this twat. I'd stick a couple of quid in because you would, because that's what you'd do. And, and I, know, I know in terms of like the numbers on there, they're, they're difficult to achieve. They are difficult to achieve, but it does help. We, we, we this year are going to be a bit of a novelty, aren't we? We're a new ground. So we, I'm not saying like some of the teams, I can't even mention, it's so depressing, isn't it? But whoever from... <laughs> From wherever, back end of wherever on a Tuesday night in December with 17 family, you know, fans and a dog, they might stick 17 quid in. You might get the odd one if they stick a few more quid in. Wrexham will bring a few. You know, whoever don't go up will bring a few. Notts County will bring a few. And I think we're asking a lot of you lads as a, as a fan base. And what I'm suggesting is, what would we say? 1,100 and whatever members of this, of this foundation trust. Surely you can divvy that up. 15 guys outside the outside um, the chatty end on a Saturday, dishing out leaflets. We only have to do one one game a season. I'm pretty sure everyone in here can give up a Saturday. Go and do that. Raise the profile of it. Be really clear on what we're looking to achieve, why we're looking to achieve it. You know, having things a bit of visibility for that old athletic su supporters foundation. Having that on a t-shirt. Having that summit that promotes some dialogue. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Mosley and go and watch them instead of being there on a Saturday afternoon. I want people to ask me what's going on at your club, so we get a, we caught a bit more sympathy. Like even if the biggest club, one of the biggest clubs in the world, United, I'm thinking, why are you all supporting Norwich? What do you want? Do you want a Saudi owner? Why are you all wearing all those different flags and those scarves? Right? I don't, I don't get what they want, and the seventy odd thousand of them every week. We need to be dead clear about what we want and why we want it, and give people an opportunity to buy in. So, just thank you. But I do think, as Matt said, that's asking a lot of you. We could all just chip in with a Saturday afternoon here and there. That's not a big ask. So I think if there's something like that. Well, thank you very much for the, the complimentary words. Um, and we, we fully agree. Um, and we talked earlier about 
everyone needs to chip in to fundraise. It doesn't have to be a massive thing. It can just be a Saturday afternoon. If you don't have an idea, someone else will, and you can support their idea. That's what this is going to be all about. So we need people to stand up and be counted because together we can change things. We can have a very good, prosperous club, one that we can all be proud of and we can all be back in there having a great time. We might not win every game, but we can certainly be proud of what we've done and what we're seeing on the pitch again. Um, yeah, and just just to sort of follow up on that as well. I mean, th th this is this is not about um, us trying to get parity back at the football club. This is not about us just sort of trying to get rid of the owner. This is about this is out trying to build a club that we want to see, and that's obviously that's part of the OASF vision. This is this is about taking something which is is broken, and not only fixing it but making it the best version of what it can be going forward. You know, we've had when was the last time we had a top half finish? Was it? 2008, I think, yeah. 2009, yeah, yeah. Semantics. Um, but you know, it, it's we've not had any success. Like we've had two, we've had two playoff campaigns in the last 20 years where we've had, we've not, had, we've not even reached the final. Like apathy is well and truly set in, and it's very, very easy to think that this club doesn't have potential. This club has got so much potential. Still, it's got a great fan base. It's got people who are willing to work hard for it. It's got everything that needs to be to be a successful club. All we need is a break, and we've got to take that advantage ourselves and make that happen. Well said, Steve. All right, the last question from, uh, you know, Ben. You know, all I want to say, guys, is, you know, obviously now we've gone out of the Football League. But... Obviously, the national media attention we've had over the pitch invasions, the protests, everything. We get national media attention because we're an EFL club. Sadly, we've gone out the league. Would we still get that next season, the National League? Would we, if we protesting, would we get the national media attention? Would the, obviously, the EFL not concerned now because we're not their problem anymore. So my concern is, it is going to dwindle off next season in terms of the the, pre the pressure on him. We need to up it, guys. We need to up it. It's up to us as a group. It is. Sadly, the EFL don't care anymore because we're not their members anymore. We really need everyone singing on the same sheet because at the end of the day, what we do on a Saturday morning is what everyone does in this room is follow old Athletic home and away. Let's do it. Again, so, sorry, just, just, just to touch on that, uh, Binners, sorry. Um, that's a great point, and Steve just made, uh, made a point there about we need a break. A break doesn't come uh, by someone just coming along and, ta and taking, sw sweeping us away and going, this is this will be this will be good again. The, a break. The, I, I don't believe in luck. People may well do, but I, I believe that you make your own luck in, in life. Um, you make your own luck in situations, and this is one of the situations that we've got to make our own luck. We've got to do the job ourselves because no, what nobody is going to do it for us. So again, if, if I can leave you with a message, certainly from Push the Boundary tonight, is rally round, tell, tell your friend and get your friends to tell a friend of, of the old athletic story and the, the scenario that we're in now. Back every back the, the support that we, we that we can do. Believe in in the in the story that that we believe that we can make and make old athletic, make you yourselves and us. Proud of Oldham Athletic once more. Thanks. Definitely. Cheers. Thank you. Look, this season, they're talking about the National League, right? It's it's highly possible that Wrexham are going to finish second on potentially on 91 points, right, and not get promoted because they still have five games to play or four games to play. Sorry, two games to play. Anyway, you know, they have some, they have some games to play. Because of the playoff structure, right, in the division. But they could finish that division. They could finish, could spend a fortune, finish on 91 points and not go up. The National League is an absolute nightmare of a league to get out of. Horrible, horrible, horrible. This is by far, getting out of the National League is going to be by far our biggest ever challenge. If you saw us in the Premier League and said, we'll bounce straight back up, and then when we got relegated, oh, we'll bounce straight. Well, I'll tell you what, we're definitely, definitely 
definitely not bouncing straight back up from the National League. We are in there for a while because, especially if these guys are in charge, right? We've got more chance of getting relegated to the National League North than we have of getting promoted back to the AFL. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. It's taken Stockport 12 years, right? Their owner was doing three years due diligence on them before he bought it, right? We are in a mess, a massive, massive mess. And the only way we're going to get out of it is by us pulling ourselves out of it and showing people out there how investable this football club is. Because nobody likes what people said before, like when Notts County went, we don't, we don't care. It's up to us to, to shine a light on Oldham and, and Oldham as a town. And that's why it's important to get local politicians and, and all those people involved and the stakeholders involved to say that Oldham, I've been living away in, Man in, in Ireland for 10 years. And before that, I lived in Manchester. And being away from Oldham, one thing that kept me connected to the town apart from my family was the football it's the one thing i talked to my mates about it's the one thing i was passionate about and it's what's why i started my podcast to 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 be close to the real issues that were going on and i missed it and i missed oldham and i love oldham and i love oldham athletic and i want the future of oldham to be better for everybody in the town and i want the future of oldham athletic to be better because that's going to help betterment of the town and I hate people sitting around. It's the same with politics. We just sit around and we just mourn about people. Oh, such and such. But people don't get off their asses and do everything about it. We all do it, we, we all do it but you've got to look yourself in the mirror and say, I, this is what I did when I was calling for people to join up the trust. And people wouldn't do it. And people wouldn't do it. And so I said, well, I've, I've, I talk the talk every week in my podcast. I'm going to have to stand up and walk the walk and do it. I didn't want to do it. And none of these lads wanted to do it. But somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it. So every single time we hear a story like Christie's and Blackpool's, it inspires somebody. And I, I hope today that at least a few of you are inspired to go out and not ask us what can we do to help. Just do something. We've got a festival. We're going to be having a punk festival. We're going to be having a 11 aside match. Things are starting to happen. You know, bands are saying, right, we're going to do something. People are saying, we're going to do something and contacting us and saying, Graham's had an idea today about the Frankfurt Rangers match to get people in the pub. Just go to the pub and, and wherever book it, it doesn't matter. As long as we're doing something every single weekend, wherever you live, let's have something happening in Shaw, in Royton, in Chatterton, wherever it is you live, get something happening. Be the group captain for that area. And don't wait and don't ask us for permission. You've got permission. Just do it. Get on with it. And we will we will sort it out. We will turn this football club around. I promise you. I promise. Right. I want to leave it on a positive. Go on. The threat of administration has been all over the papers, this and the other. I personally don't think the Alan Moore syndicate can afford to go into administration because that way they would get absolutely nothing back. How serious is the threat of administration, in your opinion, to Oldham Athletic? The, the, the threat of administration is serious. The future of our football club is, is dire. And I would view it as how many seconds to midnight? We know whatever that expression is. Don't sit around and wait for it to happen. Because it's going to happen if you do, right? Simple as that. So, yeah, it's going to happen. We're, we're, we're going to lose our football club. Let's look at it that way, until, unless we do something about it. Well, I mean, look at it from the point of view that uh, there's, if, if, if you didn't pay your mortgage, right, so what we can say, what he has said to us is, No, and that's because he doesn't want to, right? He doesn't want to put the he doesn't want to see the club suffer. But there has to become a point if Abdallah will not pay him. The, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, he's not a charity, is he? So we the, there's a possibility, yeah. Yeah. Look, 
all, 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 let me just say, oh, you can ask all these questions as much as you want, right? They're all, val they're all valid. Unless we've got some money and some clout to do something about it, it doesn't matter. We can talk about it all day. And we've spoke about it all the time. It's not up to us to do it's not it's not up to us to do any of that is it so we'd have to wait and see wouldn't we we'd have to wait and see but we just have to keep doing what we can control which is raise money yeah the, with the conversations but there is but there are numerous possibilities and we don't know which is which it, it might not be the end of the world yeah exactly exactly it might not be the end of the world yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have to be ready as much as we can be, because we can only do so much. Yeah. We, we, yeah. It, 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 we, we we've, we've got look. We've got lawyers that, that look at that kind of thing, and you know, we, you know, we, we can only do so much. We've got to raise money. And be ready for work and try and, like you, Danny was saying about Bury, try and stop it from happening. Or at least when the worst case scenario comes, that we are ready and that we are not just ignoring the elephant in the room, which is what we're trying to do by being here tonight. Yeah, the, 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 and the threat of administration is obviously real. You know, I mean, if, 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 he's, if Abdullah's not paying his rent, for example, is that the only bill he's not paying? You know, it, there's going to be other stuff. There's, I'm sure there's going to be other stuff out there that if you dug deep enough, he's not paying. Yeah, you know, and so it's so it's not really a case of whether whether Blitz is willing to call that in. It's whether somebody else that owes owes him money, that he owes money to is yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so you know we can't we can't sit around and wait for for that situation to unfold. But it's an absolute. <laughs> no, he just owes us an explanation. That's all. <laughs> and what I will say, just to finish on, is that me and Steve have had the. Uh, the pleasure, in inverted commas, of speaking to Abdallah on, on Zoom and whether he would have last fans to, uh, well, well, certainly the last representative of ours to speak to him. Um, and after he'd finished reeling off whose fault this was, um, including yours and uh, Father Christmases and whoever, for a big long list, he stopped him and said, Abdallah, you've not taken any responsibility for this yourself. This was like last September. And he will not take responsibility for it. And I looked him in the eye, and I've got great pleasure of being able to say that I said this. And I said to him, you won't beat us. We're far stronger than you are. There's more of us. And we love this club more than you can possibly imagine. So whatever you think you're going to do, it's, it's not going to work. And we told him that. And he knew, I think he knew, didn't he? So he's just, it's a rear guard action. He's being stubborn, but he's never going to win. We'll win. Right? Simple as that. Right? So listen, everyone's getting fidgety. People are having to go. Thanks for coming. And make sure you leave fired up. And let's save this football club. Thank you for coming. Thanks a lot.